Dreaming Our Futures premieres this month at the University of Minnesota. It features Ojibwe and Ocheti Shakoi artists and knowledge keepers. Brenda Child is one of the curators and joins us today. Welcome, Dr. Child. Thank you very much. This is the inaugural exhibit of the George Morrison Center for Indigenous Arts. I have the catalog. It's stunning. Tell us about the project. We really tried to make the exhibit catalog for this um, kind of first venture of what we are calling the George Morrison Center for Indigenous Arts at the University of Minnesota, um, a very special catalog. And we want it to kind of reflect the work that we do at the university, not just in the Department of Art, but in our longstanding Department of American and Indian Studies. And so we had some pretty interesting folks uh, contribute essays to the uh, book. But we also, one of the things you might notice is that when we feature some of the artists, the 29 artists who are participating, artists always make these interesting little statements about their work and their background. And we wanted to make sure that they were translated into Ojibwe as well as Dakota, because those are the two, not just indigenous languages of Minnesota, but the two languages that we teach our students at the University of Minnesota. And so we want to make sure that we're kind of featuring that work in our exhibit catalog, that we're not just saying, oh, native languages are important, but it's a really important, significant part of our uh, the work that we do with our students at the university. So we wanted to kind of make sure that's a feature of future exhibits as well as this exhibit catalog. There's a number of public programs that will highlight the work and the artists. Particularly, I'm interested in the February 2nd Horizon Seminar, Art and the American Indian Citizenship, 1924 to 2024. Tell us about that. That's the 100th anniversary of the Snyder uh, legislation, making Indian people citizens of the United States. And so we have to uh, kind of remember that complicated history of uh, uh, Indian people here in our region, but also across the United States. And think about those big moments in Indian history as kind of part of our programming. This uh, exhibit is extremely political. Yes, I think it is quite political. And so that kind of started a conversation here. And what it made me realize is how excluded we are in many places in this country, um, and especially in Minnesota around the arts or historically how we have been excluded. And so I talk about, um, I use actually an illustration by my husband, Steve Primo, who um, when I when the Capitol building reopened in St. Paul, they asked me to come in and give a lecture. And I was just telling him about it, you know, just sitting here telling him about it. He drew this wonderful cartoon about Alexander Ramsey, who was still alive when the cornerstone was laid for the Minnesota Capitol. And it shows in this kind of political cartoon, Ramsey laying the con cornerstone, but sort of on the bodies of Dakota people, right? And so you can look at history, you can look at um, our recent history, I think of um, like the great artist, um, Jim Denemy's work that's also featured in the exhibit. You know, it, there's a lot of political commentary on our region and the politics of Minnesota and the United States that takes place in this exhibit. And whenever you get artists together, you're going to have that, I think. See Dreaming Our Futures in Minneapolis until March 16th. It then travels to Rochester and finishes the year in Duluth, Minnesota. Shirley Snavy, ICT News.